Hello, my name is Maximilian Prüfer. I'm an artist. Uh, I mostly work here in my studio and as well sometimes working here in my outdoor studio space close to the Bavarian Alps. In 1989 I was a three-year-old boy playing in Portugal where I lived at this time. Which wall does your research break? What is the challenge your project addresses and what is your solution? My work breaks the wall of visibility. Engaging with nature I've developed different techniques that give even the smallest and seemingly insignificant movements and traces visibility. Over the past nine years I developed a representational technique called Naturantopie that is distinct from other printing, drawing or photographic techniques. My method involves a coating process on the paper I use with microscopic particles which condense through movement and registering the traces. For example, of a butterfly's wings moving or a snail muscular movement or the exact moment of impact when rain lands on the paper. I started developing this technique in order to see how I could render the lives of primitive living creatures visible. More specifically, my work is a constantly involving search for how to see and understand the different complex relationships found in nature. Essentially, I use my findings as philosophical models and as lenses to see nature, my surroundings and the world. What is your essential new finding of your research? What makes it innovative? My technique Naturantopie is a process by which I coat paper with microscopic particles to render even the most minute movements in nature visible. Here, for example, you can see the traces of nine different ants that walk inside a cylindrical shape for three hours. The startling thing about making this work was seeing how one ant, after some time, escaped the restricted cylindrical shape it was walking around, but it still chose to reproduce the same movement following the outside of the shape despite it having been freed from its confinement. These studies and intense moments of observation make me reconsider how freedom can be and what it even means. Do we also choose to reproduce learned, confined behaviors even after we have been released from them? What role does language itself play and what its the essential qualities and limitations? And how do these influence the visualization of different living beings' way of moving or smelling, for example? Here's a work where you can see the intersections of two ants, sand trails, or here's an image of an ant trail created from millions of tiny footprints. This image that resembles the night sky is made through raindrops falling onto my coat paper. It represents a systematically ordered structuring of water vapor as drops and become a visual comparison with, with the cosmos in which the stars were formed from dust clouds. The subject material and form in the picture are reflected in their process of creation. Then this picture was made by placing snails in an order grid on the paper before slightly tiling the background. Not only do we see their movement but what becomes visible is how all living beings have learned throughout evolution to expand as little energy as possible, which creates the condition for me to direct an entire group in one direction, which gives space for us to examine how easily manipulated and directed we can also be as a society. This picture shows a dead bird's decomposition process in three stages. You see this little halo area here around the bird's head is actually made up of thousands of flies' footprints and the last stage show hundreds of maggots and larvae. To me, the beauty in this picture lies in how it shows us so clearly how the natural process of death is also filled with life. How does society benefit from your research? Perhaps you could describe my work as extended research into different ecosystems. This obviously also includes how these relate to one another. I am frequently confronted and concerned with the question of how and who the we often used when we discussing climate change, for example, is made, understood and described. How does the sum of smaller individual decisions and behavior from a sense of we and what models are we currently using to investigate these questions? I believe these questions greatly influence the way society, nature and politics can be seen and felt. Which questions remain unanswered? Which part of your research keep you lying awake at night? 
Reading animal traces of any kind is part of humankind's first alphabetic achievement, if you will. The knowledge from this type of reading is still a very essential part of our perception and awareness of nature, but also influence how we represent nature in cultural terms. I would like everyone to be able to understand themselves as an active participant and part of this world. What did you want to become as a child? Did this wish come true? As a child I wanted to become an architect, a poet, researcher, artist, carpenter, soldier, archaeologist. So in many ways I think I created my own profession that lies somewhere in between all of those. 